Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first Mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next comment or question comes from G. Gilwee. I think that's the right way you pronounce it. Uh, in response to the Yamaha DX7 AD1 adapter cartridge, a video I did in January 2016. And he writes, is there any adapter that can allow uh, using Mark II carts in the Mark I? <laughs> Put it this way, officially the answer is no. Because what they wanted was they wanted you to upgrade from the Mark I to the Mark II and not go back the other way. And there are actually some reasons probably why it doesn't work the other way around. Um, so therefore they've never produced effectively a, a Mark II to Mark I version of the ADP-1 cartridge to allow that to operate. Um, now a few years ago I came across a web page where the, where the author was attempting to build a cradle that could use um, in this scenario. I seem to recall that not only is the cartridge size different, in that the Mark 1 obviously is smaller than the Mark 2, but the pinout of the cartridge is also different um, between the two. Now the ADP 1 accounts for that going from one to the other, but going back the other way it's a bit more difficult. And I can't recall whether he actually um, finished the project or not, and I've tried to find his web page since and I've not been able to find it. It's one of those web pages that I kind of came across while searching for something else and was an interesting read, so I read it, um, and then that was kind of it. Um, now, the other reason why I think um, going the other way is, is, is a bit more difficult is that in terms of sound generation, although the DX7 and the DX7 Mark II use the same sound generation process, the, on, the, on the two there were, more, there were a couple more things involved. And I wonder whether that's the reason why a two cartridge might not work on a one, because the, the sound source that's been created might not necessarily be 100% compatible with the, with the Mark I architecture um, in terms of the additional features that were added to the Mark II. I don't know that for sure. I've got no evidence to say that is the case, but that's just pure speculation on my part. Next comment question comes from the C Bone 1979, and this was in response to Nautilus. I disagree. Uh, convincing craftwork uh, a video I did in February 2022, uh, and the C Bone writes supply chain notwithstanding. I think Nautilus is a stand-in keyboard, so to speak. Everybody is is kind of coming down to the same um, chain of thought. I don't think big expensive workstations are their market right now and they are going to in a different direction and have been for some time. A lot of talent that were part of the Oasis uh, Kronos uh, work streams no longer exist at Cord. Many have moved on and I just don't see that they're going to create a completely new OS design model that has really been the style and functionality of use as far back as the Trinity. One thing is for sure, this business moves at a snail's pace. Models, especially flagships, have long lifespans, and so we too have a lot of time to armchair discuss how this will play out. Wouldn't disagree with that either. Um, <clears throat> I agree, 32-bit operating systems and tinkering around the edges for the user interface, that's basically what Korg have done with between the Kronos and the Nautilus and the Oasis and the Kronos. Um, <clears throat> The, the workflow, although the, the way the Oasis and the Kronos works, the actual workflow of, of the synthesizers themselves have been, has been around for 
quite a few years to probably take it back even further than the, the Trinity, if you like. Um, and, you know, I'm inclined to believe, I've, I've believed pretty much from the from the moment the Nautilus launched and all the, all the influences went in, um, <clears throat> that Nautilus was really a placeholder. Um, your comment about talent at Korg was really interesting. Um, now, obviously, the, the whole concept behind the Oasis was uh, a group of individuals that were in Korg late 90s and it took them till um, you know mid 2000 noughties if you like before the the Oasis made its appearance and it didn't have a particularly long lifespan on it because it was too expensive um, and that's the reason why the Korg the Kronos came um, but the talent that, that worked on these two platforms having left the company is interesting um, <clears throat> One would have hoped, um, and one does hope, that these companies have some sort of talent progression. But having worked in the software industry and realising how short-sighted a lot of management is, it's very possible they didn't. Um, I see people leave organisations um, and we don't properly debrief them um, as they're walking out the door. So, you know, making sure that we understand what they've been doing, understand where they're at with their projects, understand, you know, the knowledge base that they've created and where is that stored. Um, I see that all the time. And it's, and it's just a sheer failure of middle management who don't really understand how to manage staff nowadays because most of them have not been trained. Um, so it's, it's sorry to say that, but I mean, I've, when I was um, training, uh, and going up through sort of managerial positions every time I went through a, a different uh, level within my company I was sent on a training course to tell me how to do that job um, not necessarily the job job as in the the, the, the skill set but as in how to manage people how to how to do appraisals how to do career progression how to do you know I, I went on all these training courses because that's what my company did um, but now they don't they don't do that anymore uh, companies have, have kind of, because of cost cutting, have kind of cut, cut all that stuff out of um, the training and progression process. So people are put into these positions and really have no idea how to nurture talent. And I find that really sad. I really do find that really sad. But it's it's the way these things happen. People do not recognise that the the tactile and soft skills are really important nowadays really really important especially as we move far more into a software and data driven or, or, um, world and keyboards are exactly the same in that um, in that phase so that's kind of my rant over management over and done with but it's uh, some good comments there Seabone